Today on the John Ackerberg Show, what is Islam teaching 1.6 billion Muslims around the world? And what could persuade devout Muslims to leave the religion of Islam and become Christians? I didn't go from worshipping one god to worshipping another god. I didn't go from being religious to being religious. I went from idolatry to knowing the one true, living, sovereign, loving, intimate God. The decision of these two brothers to leave Islam and place their faith in Jesus Christ caused their family to disown them. They went on to get their PhDs. Now Dr. Ergen Kanner is Associate Professor of Theology at Liberty University. And Dr. Emir Kanner is Assistant Professor of Church History at Southeastern Theological Seminary. If American Muslims were asked to choose, would they be more loyal to America or to their own religion? You have been obliged. You are obligated to holy war. You must fight. You know, the Quran is very explicit on this. You have been obliged to holy war. If you do not go on holy war, you are endangering yourself with hellfire. And so they're in, a, they're in a public relations nightmare, but they're also in a spiritual nightmare. The public relations nightmare is affirm jihad and face the wrath of America, you know, the American media, deny jihad and face the wrath of the Muslim community. Today, these two former Sunni Muslims tell what Islam taught them about government, jihad, God, women, about Christians and Jews, and others who don't believe in Allah. We invite you to join us. Welcome. My guests today are two former Muslims who came to faith in Jesus Christ. Their family disowned them. They went on their education to get their doctorates. They are now professors at Christian seminaries. They've written two best-selling books. And we're talking about what do Muslims believe? What did they believe when they were in Islam? And we're talking about the fascinating thing today of what is salvation in Islam? And uh, Emir, start us off. What is it that you believed? What was the goal? What did you have to do to get there in Islam? Well, the five pillars that you had to do from the creed to the prayer to the almsgiving uh, to the fasting and finally the hajj is what a Muslim hopes will get them good enough, 50.1%, yet they have this scale, Surah 23 says in 101, and that they always have this fear in Surah 17, fasted around their necks. Uh, but we watched it very personally. Uh, that is, um, we watched our father, who was dying of prostate cancer, he was so kind enough, through the convincing of our stepmother, to see us again. And we're so grateful to God that we got to be reconciled to our father. After 17 years apart from my brother and a decade from myself, we're grateful. But I tell you, when I walked in that house, how much it broke my heart to see that he had no peace, no joy, no hope. Why? If it's based on works, you can't know until you're dead. But if it's based on grace, you can know right now. And what I remember of that day, he died on my birthday in 1999. What I remember of that day so clearly is it was absolutely no contentment and no peace. He never cracked a smile. He gave us the Qurans four days before he died and handed us hopefully that we would revert back to Islam somehow. But he himself never found any eternal joy. Ergun, take us back, because maybe some folks didn't hear the program in which you talked about it. And that is, there was a time when you investigated Jesus, and all of a sudden you realized he was more than a prophet, and that the real reason that Jesus was tried was for blasphemy, because he actually claimed to be God. That's what the evidence showed, and that got you thinking, and eventually you realized that Jesus not only claimed to be God, but he was God. You placed your faith in him, but you had to go back and tell your father. What was that like? What happened when you told him? So let's go to the beginning of the story and then come well, to the Well, sure. Um, we had come to America, my father being an architect. Um, I was going to follow in my father's footsteps. I was going to become a worker in the mosque, just like our father was. And he built mosques in, in America and, and overseas. And so for me to become a Christian was more than just a change in my life. It was a betrayal to him. Uh, your children, you know, following along in your footsteps is very big in our culture. And so my father disowned me. For him, it was the best option he had. And for me, it was as bad as it humanly can be explained. Were words said? Yes. Yes. Um, I, was, I was denying Allah. I was denying faith in Allah, faith in Islam, faith in the Quran. I believe Jesus Christ was Lord, Savior, and God. I was no longer a Muslim. I was a believer in Jesus Christ, a Christian. 
I was the oldest of three, so I had not only betrayed my father, betrayed my mother, but betrayed my brothers who were supposed to follow after me. Um, I learned what Psalm 68 said, that he's a father to the fatherless and a hope for the widow. A year later, both of my brothers accepted Christ. And I want in stark contrast to compare this to the way our father, we saw our father pass, was the way we saw our grandmother pass. Our grandmother did not accept Jesus until she was late 1990s, until, until she herself was in her 90s. But when she died, she went with peace and hope even though she did not accept Jesus until she was almost a hundred years old. The distinction is not the chronology, not the amount of time you were saved, but in what or in whom do you put your faith or confidence? The, the, the key, no one goes to heaven by good works and no one goes to hell by, good, by bad works. People go to heaven for accepting Jesus Christ as Savior. People go to hell for rejecting Jesus Christ as Savior. I'm just still stunned with uh, what you were telling me and how to process that in your own mind. Your father disowned you at that spot. Also, uh, in reading your book, I realized that uh, you guys, with your eyes wide open, knew what you were doing. The Quran and, the, and the, the, the Hadith have some words to say about those who openly reject the faith. What does it say? Hadith 957 says that if anyone, Muhammad speaking, Muhammad says, if anyone changes his Islamic religion, kill him. Not only is there words about the person that leaves, you could kill them, if you were in Iran, or Iraq, in the Sudan, I mean, that could actually take place. But the fact is, from your father's point of view, there was a reason he cut you off. What does the Quran and the Hadith say about that? Surah 385, if a Muslim accepts another religion, it will never be accepted of him. And so it is the very fact that when he saw us, he didn't know what to do. He was in America. He was in a secular country. He loved us. We loved him. He was our hero. Yeah. Uh, this, this wasn't a matter that something he wanted to do, but something he was commanded to do. And so he, using the scripture in the way he used it, mercifully just said, I can't see you anymore. He, what was he afraid of? He was afraid that we would pervert our two sisters. He was... Uh, he was afraid that it would be a bad testimony to him as a Muslim. And you can see that it even broke his heart. This is not to say our father was a bad father. Indeed, our father was a wonderful father. I, I have a nearly six-month-old at home. And the more I raise him, the more I recognize he was a good father. But he followed a fallible prophet. He followed a false prophet. He followed one who said, this is what you should do. And my father was devout and did it. Talk about the angst the 51 percent uh, because some folks might not have understood what you were saying there islam actually teaches that at the end of your life you have got to reach 51 percent good of all the works that you do in your life they have to add up to 51 percent right so 23 of the quran so 23 101 and verse 102 says that if he who finds the scales heavy will find salvation. He who finds the scales light, meaning the good side scales light, shall burn in eternal hellfire. Um, we live and die by these scales. That, the, that at the moment of consciousness, everything you do, everything you say, everything you think, everything, every motivation, every desire, every deed, everything that you possibly go through the transoms of your mind, either goes on the good scales or the bad scales. That you have a gene or an angel, you have, you, have a, you have an angel sitting on one shoulder, an angel sitting on the other. They write down everything, spirit being, writing down everything that you do. At the end of your life, they must be tipped in favor. They must be tipped in favor of the good. Unbelievable. We're going to want to talk about the good news of what you found in Jesus Christ and compare the two. All right? We want to do a careful comparison, and we're going to do that. It's fascinating information. I hope that you'll stick with us. The information that you're hearing today with these two former Muslims who place their faith in Jesus Christ is available on DVD or VHS videotape. At the end of today's program, we'll tell you how you may order these